Hello everyone, photographer Andre Designs here with a new retouch video. Alright, so today we're going to move a little bit faster than um, all my other videos, hopefully. <laughs> Alright, so this photograph um, was shot in natural light. I was using an Nikon D750 um, as usual and um, I was shooting at 1.8 with the 85 millimeter Nikon lens for the shutter it was 640 um, the ISO is 100 all right so let's get right into editing this photo um, so let me give you an idea of how I actually did this so let me go back over to the raw photos here so what I did was to um, put the camera way down on the ground and I was actually using the um, the the um, display at the back to actually get the shot. So I was actually pretty low down when I was doing this one. All right. So um, first thing I'm going to go, go over to my um, action um, panel here, and I'm going to click on frequency separation. I'm going to leave the radius at 6.4. You can download the um, frequency separation action by using the link in the description. It takes you to my website and you just download it. Alright, so I'm going to just zoom up on the model's face a bit. And then I'm going to go down to the low frequency layer. Uh, I'm going to press M on my keyboard for the mixer brush. For you, the mixer brush is going to be under... Um, not sure why this is saying M. This should actually say, uh, this is saying B, it should say M. Let me go and change this. Um, shortcuts. Wait, it should be tools. So M should not be this. I'm just going to delete these. Go on to my mixer brush, and mixer brush should be M. Yeah. Uh, save this. All right. Good. So when I press M on my keyboard, a mixer brush is going to be, is going to appear basically. All right. So what I'm going to do is to start mixing the image. All right. So when you're using the mixer brush, ensure that it's cleared. You come right here and you clear it. Once you see a color right here, you have to clear it. Ensure that this is the only one that is highlighted. Wetness is going to be at 275% um, flow. Everything else is going to remain the same. All right, so right here is a lighted area. So I'm just going to come right here and just mix that light area. Um, the dark area over that side, mix it as well. Mix right here. Mix right here. Let's look at it before and after for that so far. Before, after. Before, after. Good. It's going to come right here. So when I'm mixing, I just follow the direction of the light and, you know, just mix where I'm seeing light um, separate from where I'm not seeing any light. So you don't want to mix them together. In some cases, you may have to mix them, but, you know, you can just test it to see what works for you. Because sometimes when you mix it, when, sometimes when you go from dark to um, uh, lighted area, uh, it will somewhat blend the image and sometimes it will not look good so you can just test it to see what works for you all right so let's come right here all right if you're ever mixing and it seems as if nothing is happening what you could do is to go up on your wetness a little bit um, and try it again but most of the time it is actually doing something so you just go before and after and you'll see the changes but I've never actually moved from two I'm always at two for my wetness All right. sometimes it's best for you to go vertical instead of horizontal well it works better for me actually so you can maybe try going um, horizontal and see what it does but vertical always works best for me because when I'm dodging and burning, I st it's always vertical. So. so I'm doing the arm now. 
Let's look at the before and after for this one as well. Before, after. You want your image to look as natural as possible, right? So it's not a good um, thing to overdo, you know, um, your editing. So just try to keep it simple as possible. But when you're shooting, you just have to be creative. Just like what I did here, you know, right here we have some grass so i just went really low and shoot um with the grass in the foreground all right so we have to careful when you're um doing that section there where you have the grass you know because you don't want to mix it and then a part of the models skin at the top may have green on it you know or something like that you just to be mindful of that sometimes as well all right so that's done before and after everything looks blended the next step now is to go to the high frequency layer and then we're going to clean up the skin a little bit so we're going to zoom in some more to the face and then i'm going to press s on the keyboard for the clone stamp because i'm always using the clone stamp for you know removing pimples and what I'm doing, I'm just sampling an area right here, and then I'm just painting, sample, sample brush. So I'm just sampling a clean area, and then paint over the area I want to remove. It's not um, something that you should rush, you should take your time. And you don't n normally always have to use... You don't always have to use the um, clone stamp, you could use the patch tool as well but you know whatever works best for you I rather use in the um, clone stamp it works better for me but in some some of my edits I use the um, the uh, what's that call again patch tool and it it actually works better than the um, clone stamp so I mean you can just try it out and see what works for you you can also use um healing brush i believe the spot healing brush you can try that as well all right so that looks good so far before and after i have a surprise for you guys i purchased a new camera and i'm not going to tell you guys what camera that is yet <laughs> but i'm so excited <coughs> about that purchase i've never spent so much money on a camera before and i i'm going to do a little review on that camera and i'm going to be doing a lot of behind the scenes using that camera so um stay tuned for that i'm so excited about it and i just cannot wait until it's here in jamaica I actually ship it to somebody in the States and they're going to be taking it here. I should get it about Sunday, um, hopefully. And I'm going to do a little review on it. Uh, I can't wait. Alright, so the face looks clean uh, before and after. I'm going to come down to her chest. Make some adjustment there as well. I'm going to come down to... I'm actually going to be purchasing a GoPro as well. Because I want to do some more behind... Because I don't really have... Most times when I'm doing my behind... Well, most times when I'm doing my, my projects. My personal projects. I... Uh, it's not planned. So most time I'll just make a call and say, Hey, let's shoot. I really don't have anybody to do the behind the scene for me. So I have to use the... Um, I have to use the GoPro on top of my camera, but the GoPro I have is a silver. I think it's a GoPro 3. It's an old, very old one. So I want something that has image stabilizer on it and stuff like that, you know, and give me better quality. Maybe do like 4K videos and then scale it down to 1080 so you have a better quality. Um, so I'm going to be doing that. I want to do a lot of behind the scene um, photo shoots. So I'm going to be doing a lot of that soon. So stay tuned for that. All right. I think I want to get the um, the GoPro 7 black. 
That's the one I want to get. It's in my shopping cart. I just need to place the order. I'm not sure when. I need to find out who is coming down um, in Jamaica soon so I can send it to them. All right, good. So I'm through with doing the cleaning up of the um, skin before and after. So the next step now is to do some dodge and burning. So I'm going to go over here to the dodge and burn layer. Um, the last, uh, the, the, this one here is the burn. So I'm just going to press B on my keyboard for the brush. Ensure that my flow is at 1%. And then I'm just going to, for the burning, I'm just going to do the dark areas. So that's right there. Let's look at it before and after for that so far. So it's going to be subtle. I'm not going to be adding too much. No, I don't want it to look too dramatic. So I'm just going to add, you know, just a little. Because, you know, I want my image to look as natural as possible. So the dodging is normally called contour in makeup. And the highlighting, which I'm going to do right now, which is the dodge. Um, the dodge is called um, highlighting in um, makeup. So burn is contouring, dodge is highlighting. Right. That looks okay. I'm just gonna highlight. Wait, just gonna highlight right here. Even though it's dark, I'm still gonna highlight it because um should be highlighted. Just gonna highlight it a little bit right here as well. Good. Here is highlighted. I'm just gonna highlight a little bit. Just enhancing that a little bit. Alright, so let's look at it before and after for the dodge and burning. See? So look at it. This is a flat image. This is when it has some curves to it and, you know, some detail. <laughs> Alright, so that's it for that portion of the image. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm going to get rid of these strands of here. Um, so I'm going to go to Control shift um, alt e to create a new layer then control J to duplicate it um, yeah so I'm just gonna come right here and I'm just gonna get the gonna hold down on this to get the healing brush and then I'm just going to paint alright that doesn't work let me see it says current layer let me go to all layers and see what happens. Uh, this is not going to work. Let me go to layer below, which would be this one. And it doesn't work either. So I'm going to go back to current layer. Do it again. So current layer is what you should be on. All right, but trust me, I honestly would rather using the patch tool. All right, if I don't use the patch tool, I'll just use the um, clone stamp. But as I said before in my previous videos, you know, I mean, anything that works for you, use that. All right. But the patch tool works better for me in some cases when it when I'm doing these things. All right, this doesn't look good. So for like right here, I'm just gonna press S on the keyboard for the um, clone stamp, and I'm just gonna sample and paint. You have to be careful though, cause of the background. All right. This big patch right here. I'm just gonna get rid of it by doing this soften the edges a little bit all right that looks good so far uh, no one will notice it <laughs> no one is not going to zoom up on your image and these images are not going to be printed they're just going to go on Instagram basically all right so that's it for the um, 
working on the skin i'm gonna work on the model's eye so i'm gonna come right here where it says teeth and um eyes i'm gonna get the brush be on the keyboard for the flow i'm gonna turn it up a little bit i'm gonna put it about 41 percent and i'm gonna paint the eyes white all right um the eyes are a little bit dark i'm just gonna bring them up a little bit by well you know what before i do that let me just control r shift e control j and then i'm gonna control shift a for camera raw so i'm going to go to auto so auto is just awesome auto always works for me all right so i'm gonna pull the shadows a little bit so i can get the, sh the eyes popping a little bit all right there good then I'm going to go to dehaze and pull it up some more. Uh, Alright, that looks good. Then I'm going to go to contrast and bring the contrast a little bit. going to expose it a little bit. So I'm going to go to exposure. Good, right there. Good. Alright, so uh, one of my... Well, I d I'm not sure if he subscribed, but he mentioned that he will subscribe. He was saying that I should stop shooting... Um, a certain time of the day where the the background is blown out to be honest I don't really care about the white ear right here and if it's something that bothers me I'll just put some clothes in it but this doesn't bother me at all I mean the main thing is the subject right here so I don't really care about the washed out background here but if you care about that just watch your background when you're shooting or well, the, the, this day, the day when I was actually shooting, it was overcast, so, yeah. Um, and I've never shot here before. Well, I've shot here a lot of times, but not from this direction, so. Yeah, but I don't really care about uh, a blown-out background at all. I just want to ensure that the, the subject's in focus, and I'm good with that. So I'm going to come over to the HSL, and I'm going to play with the greens a little bit. Right there, I'm going to put some yellow in there good so that's it let me zoom out a little bit so let's look at the before and after before and after before and after so it looks rich now I'm gonna come down here to the uh, color balance where is it uh, color balance and then I'm gonna go over to the shadows and I'm gonna put a five Maybe that's too much, or maybe it's not, but I'm going to put three. Then I'm going to go to color lookup. Where is color lookup? Right here. And then I'm going to just put this at 37. And then I'm going to play with the, um, I'm going to play with the different lots that they have and see which one looks good. I like this one yes I'm gonna use this one so I'm basically finished let's look at the before and after now I'm gonna put everything in a group oh wait right here control G and then this is the before let me zoom it up a little bit more this is the after so before after before after right so that's it for the video if you learned something please subscribe give me a thumbs up continue watching I have some awesome videos coming soon and my new camera and stuff thank you guys for watching and have a great time bye bye